All right, Raf Giallo here for Off The Ball and uh, Team 33 as well. Jonathan Higgins, we've brought a Galway man here. Mm -hmm. And in between, we've made this very Connacht centric. So we've Leitrim, Galway, Galway, Galway. David Ford, former Ireland goalkeeper, how are you? Good afternoon, gents, how are yeah. you? Uh, good, um, so you've retired recently and I was reading the statement and you put a lot of kind of work into, I suppose, the wording of it and a few kind of things jumped out and one of them was stillness um, has become a teammate. Um, it's a nice bit of wording. Um, why did you kind of go for that? Yeah, at the time, um, a lot of people were asking me, uh, you know, what were my future plans, you know, now that I've come into me twilight years and getting on and stuff like, you know, so um, I was going to sail off into the sunset, you know, but I spoke to my friend, he's a creative designer and producer and stuff, and he just felt that, you know, that we could produce something that would be um, representative of, of my career, you know, and I just felt that when a lot of people were asking me about my career and everything else that I had such an amazing time even though I was in England for so long Ireland was always in my heart and I just wanted to catch something that was Irish and Celtic and uh, that real essence of what it is to be Irish and, and uh, to show a part of myself that you know as a footballer we have a certain level of um, teamwork and we're in teams and stuff and we, we we get caught up in that dynamic and that process and stuff and oftentimes we lose our sense of individuality. So for me it was about me exploring another dimension of myself and then to produce um, you know, some, some poetry and the Bowron in there and just some of the scenery around Ireland was such a, a humbling experience, you know, from what we actually wanted to do was initially just to get it out for, you know, family and friends and a few people to see it. But I was absolutely blown away by by the reception received from it. it was it was a phenomenal a phenomenal um, reception just the well wishers and the best wishes and something that was blind to me as well for so many years and stuff like you know so I must say thank you to everyone out there that watched it and uh, that's given me the support the encouragement and the love down through the years and um, it has really you know blown over you know, opened up my heart in terms of my retirement and uh, what football has meant for me. Yeah, um, the idea of stillness as well, is that tied into the meditation that you've uh, practiced as well? I think it's a Japa meditation. Yeah, I've practiced different, various different types of meditation for years now. Um, I've explored many different practices, many different techniques, um, whether it's a sound based or uh, whether it's done through uh, breathing techniques, etc, etc. Um, you know, just recently I've just returned from um, Arizona and spent some time up in the reservations in Arizona. I've had many trips to the to the Himalayas and exploring the ancient knowledges and uh, wisdoms of, of uh, uh, the Himalayas. And you know, also I spent some time recently with a, a Bolivian shaman and stuff like you know. So I've been just exploring uh, parts of myself that football has allowed me to do that. But there was always that part of myself that I wanted to. Uh, explore in uh, the deeper realms and deep, deep, deeper dimensions of myself and stuff. So once I became still in myself and I started to uncover my nature and my true self, those those feelings and those emotions and not only identifying myself as a footballer, I felt that there was more to me and more that I could actually achieve and more that I could do. So that's where um, my journey began. Yeah, was it the Navajo um, reservation by any chance? Because I was just there in July. Right. Yeah. No way, yeah, yeah. We went to the Navajos, yeah. They had the Star Wars um, Cultural Museum yeah. there where it all began. Uh, we spent two nights, three nights up in the, the Hopi Cultural Center as well. Yeah. So between the Hopis, the Apaches and the Navajos and just taking in their culture, their traditions. Um, you know, it was a phenomenal experience. You know, yeah. such a such a, a huge experience. And... Um, you know, it was, it was it was something that I've always wanted to do since I was a, a young boy, since I always wanted to be that little cowboy in Indian, you know, I was always a one for the Indians. Yeah, it's very scenic and as Galway would be, as Jonathan would know as well. Absolutely, yeah, and it's the one thing I have to say as a, as a fan initially grow, growing up in Galway, we grew up in an age where I suppose it was primarily the Jack Charlton area where there wasn't really much of a representation on the Irish team from, from a local player. Like you give so much hope and so much encouragement and I know the buzz was, was unbelievable. Did that kind of, and we saw that reflected in, you know, especially with that, with that video. Is that something you're proud of, you're kind of given that avenue, that, that platform really? Absolutely. Um, I'm just in the process of finishing off writing my book and, you know, from that, it's such a, a cathartic, deep, reflective practice that um, 
when I started to go through the layers of myself and my youth and going through my journey, growing up in Galway, growing up in the west of Ireland, that sense of rugged wildness and really embracing and embellishing my nature and who I was and a proud, proud Irishman. You know, even when I think about it now, it even just gives shivers up my spine and stuff. And I can see how emotional you, like, you were now already. And, um, you know, when I started to, to delve back into that and where my, my love for football actually came, it was actually those Jack Charlton era, you know, from 88 onwards. But really, Italy 90 was absolutely special. You know, Packy Bonner, an absolute hero of mine, making that penalty save. David O'Leary smashing that one into the top corner. Um, missed penalty. There was just so much excitement. There was so much euphoria. The country, looking back at it then, we, we had so little as a, as, as, a, as a family and as a nation and stuff. And it just brought so much sense of pride and so, such such respect back to the to the country and you know Jack Charlton and, and, and that era and the players of that time like you know your Packy Bonners, your John Aldridge's, you know there's there's so many players there that you could just Ray Houghton, you know, just absolute legend. Yeah and we look back at your career, you know, starting off from the Dyke Road and you know your bit first big men's football we call it. You went, I suppose, the scenic route around very picturesque and I think again it's another wonderful you know uh, demonstration of the, your video retirement video where it shows the, your journey really you know you you started off there you ended up going to the united kingdom and coming back playing the league of ireland we've seen a lot of players now well, i suppose jack burton springs to life most important or kind of most highlighted at the moment that's done that journey and given the platform is, is is that a journey that you think players should should be encouraged obviously we've seen our own two goalie uh, colleagues, uh, Greg Cunningham and Aaron Connolly, now making the breakthrough. But that League of Ireland step up, do you think that's a, a route that many more players should go? A million percent. One thing my journey has taught me, and especially now stepping into these realms of coaching, mentoring and personal development, was that sense of uh, responsibility. Understanding that we always have a choice. You know, it's like what you're saying, it was a scenic route, it was a picturesque route. And what emerges for me and springs to mind is that sense of a painting. You know, we might make a painting and we might have a paint, but to a certain degree and to a certain point in our life, we do have a chance to change that drone. We do have a chance to paint something beautiful, paint something new, and, and that's understanding our choices and, and our awareness and that. But bringing that back to, to myself, that when I returned from the, my time at West Ham and it was a deep, deeply difficult time for me, you know, coming back basically with me tail between my legs and that sense of a failure and should have done this, should have done better. Um, but it really gave me a chance to embed myself back into football. Um, when I met Stephen Kenny and he just ignited that fire and that passion in me again to actually my love for football and get involved with football again. And then it's just started to snowball there. Then all of a sudden then I got me easel out again. I got me, I got me, uh, me canvas out again and, and got myself some new paints and uh, new brushes and I started to paint myself another picture and then I started to formulate uh, a new picture of right this has been such a successful part in my career we've had two amazing seasons at Derry City now there's other clubs from the UK coming and knocking and one of them happened to be Cardiff City so there was always that continual openness to learn and to grow and I think if we can remain in, in that sense that mindset that opened uh, growth mindset that I always had and as a goalkeeper that was one of my biggest um, my biggest uh, strengths was my, my willingness to learn all the time learn new things from new people whether it's you know you take a little portion or a little percentage of what they're actually teaching or what their wisdom or knowledge is and adapting that into your style into your technique and uh, you know it's, it served me well it served me extremely well and I definitely feel co players coming back it is a, a great pathway for players to come back um, step into League of Ireland football, step into the men's game, into that realm and that world where you're, you're playing every week. And really it's about understanding that journey of getting your confidence back, building yourself back up again and uh, strengthening yourself. Yeah, and um, in terms of GA as well, um, you kind of talked about bringing other aspects in that might help you learn. Um, there was a period where I think there was a slight choice there. Maybe you might go down the GA route, or you might actually continue yeah. with soccer. What did you pick up from the GA side that kind of stayed with you? Yeah, what what I probably picked from my my GA uh, roots, I suppose, would have been my fearlessness in terms of high balls and coming for crosses. And that sense of, um, uh, how would you call it, the, the rough and tumble, in a nice way to put it, like, you know, 
um, some like they call it the old dark arts and stuff. But uh, you know, to to have that sense of um, understanding of, especially when you're in the air and you're coming for balls and stuff that when you're coming down you're landing you know how, how to land properly how to engage in a tackle how to take take the pressure of a, of a shoulder um, and then also ultimately it was it was handling skills you know hand-eye coordination and uh, there was there was so much in that game you know the, the, the pace the power and there were so many aspects of it that actually you know uh, marry up with with, with with playing in goals and stuff you weren't tempted to give Kevin a Welsh a call when you came back and your days in England were coming to an end? Ah, well, Jesus, no. I was over in Ireland or over in um, London a few times watching all Ireland finals and stuff in Crow Park. And that was another aspiration of mine was, was, was to play at Crow Park and stuff. And for years watching, you know, the last over the last number of years and even a couple of years ago to watch the Hurlers winning and bringing back the, uh, the Lee McCarthy back to Galway over the west of the Shannon again was absolutely fantastic. So... Um, yeah, you've just sown an old seed now. I might be giving him a call after this. Pass on his number afterwards. <laughs> yeah, 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 if you can do, yeah. I suppose the final point, so we're obviously in the Aviva Stadium. You'll be walking out here um, on Thursday um, during the uh, during the Switzerland game, and it's a great honour. Um, there were also difficult periods, I guess, in your career, um, in and around, I suppose, that period where you know, the, you'd know you started the Euro 2016 qualifiers, had gone really, really well, and then Martin O'Neill makes a change. Um, I suppose, did meditation and that kind of thing help in terms of dealing with some of those um, issues? Yeah, 100%. And it was all about really adopting the, the right attitude. And for me, the, the, the whole journey stepping out was to get Ireland to the Euros. And if I was a part of that, absolutely fantastic. You know, I might not have met it, but Ireland and we met it, the country met it, the team met it. And the show we actually put on for our, our fans and for our people of this nation and for this land was truly inspiring. And even though I didn't get it, get to go, and it, it did hurt at that time and it did hurt in that moment. But ultimately to see, you know, us getting to a quarterfinals of a major tournament was a phenomenal experience. And, you know, that's, that's how I viewed it and that's how I looked at it. All right, David Ford, thanks a million for your time. And Thank Jonathan Higgins, thanks for coming down as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.